our second speaker this morning is David Goad, The Eight Second Rule. The Eight Second Rule, David Goad. I was doing 65 on Highway 65 in my electric blue 1962 Volkswagen Beetle. Oh yeah. That car was almost as powerful as a riding lawnmower. <laughs> like most 17 year olds, I thought I was invincible. So when I started getting sleepy behind the wheel, I just shook it off like a man. The second time my head dropped, rolled down the window, let in some of that Indiana farm fresh air. <laughs> Third time my head dropped, crank up the radio on a warm summer's eve. On the train bound to nowhere, met up with the gambler. We were both. <laughs> Apparently, I was not too tired to sleep. My little car drifted off the highway down to this big wide ditch, and when it slammed into the other side, my hood popped up. So all I could see were tall weeds whipping my headlights. And my brain told me to brace for impact. But my hands would not let go of the wheel. I somehow steered left and right and kept that car in the middle of the ditch until my foot found the brake and brought it to a halt. So that's bodily damage. Nothing hurt but my pride. So I crawled out of the car, all the way up the embankment to the other side, and I was standing there on the road, and that's when the tears started to flow. At least I had a shoulder to cry on. <laughs> I remember thinking, Wow, I am alive, but my dad's going to kill me. <laughs> I managed to hold on until a good Samaritan picked me up and brought me over to this truck stop where I could call my dad to come pick me up. I'm sitting there on this cold chrome bar stool, clutching my hot chocolate, which I could not drink because my hands were still shaking so much. And I looked a few seats down, this old cowboy, who ironically looked like Kenny Rogers, after a rough night. <laughs> he looked over at me and said, Are you okay, son? I told him the short version of the story. And he thought for a second, looked back at his plain white coffee cup and said, Well, I say you've done all right. Excuse me? I just seriously jacked up my car. I'm shaking like a chihuahua. And you say, I've done all right. <laughs> Pour a little more sugar in his cup. Yup. See, you follow the eight second rule. <laughs> All right, I'll bite. What's the eight second rule? Well, son, back in the day, when I was a rodeo rider, I sat behind a metal gate on 2,000 pounds of irritated bull named Tornado. And when the gate flew open and the world spun out of control, all that bull wanted was me off of his back. But if I could ride for eight seconds, I qualify. Then I could jump off and the clown would come around and help me out of there. Eventually. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now Kenny Rogers had my attention. <laughs> I said, how did you ride a wild bull for eight seconds? I was expecting a lesson on timing, balance, equal and opposite reaction. But instead, he simply turned and said, Son, when the world spins out of control, you got two choices. You can give up and let go, or you can just hold on. That's it. <laughs> the eight second rule is just hold on. <laughs> Gee, thanks, old timer. <laughs> My dad came to pick me up not long after that, and he chose not to kill me. Instead, he gave me one of those hugs that said, My life was way more important than a banged up car. And then he brought me back the next morning to the scene of the accident to rescue my banged up beetle. And in the morning light, I could see my tracks through the tall grass. How I somehow steered that car left and right and kept it from flipping over. Not unlike an eight-second bull ride. <laughs> the old cowboy was right.
Because you see, with my hand still firmly on that wheel, I somehow managed to miss a barbed wire fence, a concrete pipe, and a telephone pole. I could have written a much different end of my story. Has your life ever run off the road like this? Or maybe there's somebody close to you who feels like the world is spinning out of control right now. But when it happens to me, I think back to that night in the ditch and to all the other times when I was able to hold on in a crisis. Like when my four-year-old son disappeared in a busy department store. Hold on. <laughs> oh, we found him all right, hiding and laughing inside a clothing rack. <laughs> I was able to hold on that time back in the 90s when I got laid off from my job, not once but twice. And I was able to hold on when my big brother called me and told me he had the C word. I said, I love you, Jeff. You can beat this. And we got busy raising money for a cure. I know you've had tornado rides in your life, too. And if you can visualize your past victories, it'll help you get past the next one. I believe that you are far stronger than you think you are. Just got to know when to hold <laughs> on. Because life and those you love,